for Christians and JWs, salvation is a core belief. In this video, I'll show you what Watchtower says about salvation and show you the verses they quote. I'll also show you what else the Bible says about it. Let's get to it. Thanks for stopping by. On YouTube, I'm known as XJW Curious, but my friends call me Pete. In a recent video, I talked about Watchtower's teaching that salvation relied upon belonging to the organization. What exactly does Watchtower say about salvation? Let's take a look at what it says on their website, shall we? Their website appears to explain salvation with this brief paragraph. Deliverance from sin and death is possible through the ransom sacrifice of Jesus. Like most Christians, JWs believe in Jesus' sacrifice. But was it really a sacrifice if he knew he'd be resurrected in a couple of days? At best, it was a bad weekend. But I digress. To benefit from that sacrifice, people must not only exercise faith in Jesus, but also change their course of life and get baptized. Baptism is very important to the Watchtower. It's more than just a public declaration to show your beliefs. It's also a legal oath to the organization. And it means a lot more than they tell you while you're studying. But that's a whole other video. A person's works prove that his faith is alive. Isn't it ironic you need to prove to the organization that you have faith in the things that they can't prove to you? There is one more sentence, but we'll discuss that later. Watchtower is fond of cherry-picking things from the Bible that can appear to support them. For instance, they use Matthew 20:28 20, to support Jesus' ransom. And it does say to give his life as a ransom in exchange for many. If you believe in the Gospels, that's acceptable. Then they cite John 3:16. Let's look at what it says. For God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone exercising faith in him might not be destroyed, but have everlasting life. So is that saying we should have faith in God, who sent his Son, or put our faith in the Son? Christians interpret it one way, Watchtower another. How do we know which if either is right. Again, I digress. They also cite Galatians 2.16, which says, Recognize that a man is declared righteous not by works of law, but only through faith in Jesus Christ. This verse is a problem for Watchtower. You see, JWs don't believe Jesus is God like the majority of Christians. So this causes a JW to experience cognitive dissonance. This is the state of having inconsistent thoughts, beliefs, or attitudes, according to Oxford languages. In other words, an internal struggle based on conflicting beliefs. JWs are taught seemingly contradictory teachings. As a JW, your Faith should be in Jehovah, the one true God. But Galatians clearly says to have faith in Jesus. This is made worse because JWs are taught Jesus is under God, a subordinate creation. So putting faith in Jesus is idol worship, and that causes another internal conflict since idol worship is forbidden. JWs are often punished for questioning Watchtower teachings, and so they internalize this conflict. But the problem with Watchtower's salvation doctrine has an even bigger problem. Follow along with me on this. 
Remember when I said there was one more sentence in the paragraph I'd come back to? Well, here it is. However, salvation cannot be earned. It comes through the undeserved kindness of God. If one were to read this as a skeptic, one might think, gee, what I do doesn't really matter. After all is said and done, it's simply God's choice. But none of us are skeptics, right? But let's just say that faith in Jesus, whether you think he's God or just God's son, is what you need. And you have to accept that Jesus' bad weekend was to pay for our sins. The big problem here is the Bible doesn't agree with that premise. Now look, I know the oral tradition I was taught since birth. Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit, and we all inherited sin as a result. But is that the real story in the Bible? Let's look at it closer. The story starts in Genesis 2, verse 17, where God says, But as for the tree of the knowledge of good and bad, you must not eat from it, for in the day you eat from it you will certainly die. Yeah. I was told that. Genesis 3, 4, and 5 tells us what the serpent says to Eve. At this, the serpent said to the woman, You certainly will not die, for God knows that in the very day you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and bad. Yep, I was told that too. As a matter of fact, I was told that that's the first lie. If we go down to verse 22, we see what God says. Jehovah God then said, Here the man has become like one of us in knowing good and bad. Wait, what? That's exactly what the serpent said would happen. The serpent told the truth. Adam and Eve did not die on the day they ate of the fruit like God said they would. So, the first spoken lie in the Bible was from God himself. I'll pause a moment to let that sink in, but I'm not done yet. The Bible tells us specifically that children cannot inherit sin from their fathers. It's in Ezekiel 18, verse 20, and it says, A son will bear no guilt because of the error of his father. It's pretty self-explanatory, isn't it? Watchtower certainly has the inherited sin thing wrong then, don't they? This is the first major crack in the foundation of Watchtower's salvation doctrine. So what does the Bible tell us about earning salvation? This is how you know the Watchtower doesn't look at context, because the answer is in the very next verse. Now if someone wicked turns away from all the sins he has committed, and keeps my statutes, and does what is just and righteous, he will certainly keep living, he will not die. So, if we repent and keep God's statutes, you know, the commandments, the law as it's called, we live. But wait, Watchtower said, however, salvation cannot be earned. They said it was in Galatians 2.21. I do not reject the undeserved kindness of God. This is a textbook example of a contradiction. Galatians and Ezekiel cannot both be true. The author of Galatians exposed the real truth when he wrote in verse 21, For if righteousness is through the law, which it says in Ezekiel, Christ actually died for nothing. And that is the biggest crack in the foundation of J.W.'s salvation doctrine. Oh, that reminds me. I have other videos where I critically examine other teachings and doctrines. 
YouTube thinks you'll like this one over here. Watch it next and take care my friends and thanks.